full count baseball and the high school winter program and really any program that is you know working with full count baseball my idea and our entire uh, mission statement or objective is to you know teach our craft and continually try and you know uh, work at your craft work at getting better um, it's, it's in direct opposition of showcase and uh, travel teams and uh, showcasing players more than it is developing players. Um, you know, in 14 years of coaching at the college level uh, and, and, and high school level, um, you know, it is the landscape of high school baseball has changed dramatically. A lot of college scouts and even pro scouts, they like to get there early because they like to see the way that you go about your business and prepare for a game. All right, so that is from the moment you put on, you tie your spikes, from the moment you step onto the field, all right, they're watching you and they want to see how you go about your business. All right, because good players are very serious about the way that they do things and they're very particular. It's almost like ritual. All right, so the good players are that way, so they're looking to see if you are that way. All right, because there's nothing worse than a player walking on first college practice and having no clue what's going on, and then they have to teach you everything and get you up to speed. Now, when you're a freshman as it is, so it's hard to play already, now you have to catch up to the sophomore, the junior, the senior, all right, and just about the way you go about things at practice. We're not even talking about ability or talent level. We're talking about the speed of practice, all right, and the way you go about things, all right? It, it all starts with, you know, is a player's skills, character, good enough? And then once you have that, is he doing the right things to market himself? Perfect game and uh, Joe Wadica's, uh, you know, invitational camps and so forth. All those things are great, but ultimately players have to be good enough. They have to work at their craft. And I think a lot of times what is getting taken away or what, what's starting to happen is, you know, people tend to, and players, parents, they're getting away from developing their skills. So our high school winter program is all about the coaches that I've put you know, in I've place. I've always felt as though, you know, I, I'd like to be a resource and the people, I, I, I happen to always say, I always say I'm a, I'm a somebody that knows, I'm a nobody that knows a lot of somebodies. And I, I've used those people as resources from coaches of national championship coaches to high school coaches, state championship coaches, to guys that are running these outstanding academies. If you're out here, you're catching the ball behind you, and the, look at the angle of the club. If you get it up towards the sky, all right, you're good to go. When you pick, you want to pick up and back because when you're picking to make a throw, right? Boom, right to your shoulder. Right here. To do something, you might as well do it right and get yourself better. So when we throw, we're going to start with a simple throwing on our knee. Take the ball on the ground, four seam grip at all times. Bring the ball back, well, the simple demonstrate without a ball. Bring it back up to a good power throwing position, throw the ball, and for this drill, we're going to focus on throwing and following through. Bring it in. You should be in sync with the infield. The infield do the same thing. They go one, two. You know, we're one, two. You know, the coaches that I put in place, I'm lucky enough to have guys that are college coaches that are teachers first and foremost, professional teachers that are college coaches, either current or have had experience as college coaches. They're teachers, full-time full, full -time teachers that are uh, former college players. You know, I, I, I was an educator professionally um, from our camps. You know, with little guys to this program, with the high school players, getting them to understand what it's like to be for the first time at a college practice and giving them real exposure to what it's going to be like to have anywhere from five to six coaches coaching and working with an outfield instructor, working with an infield instructor or two infield instructors, and then combining that into a team and a group practice format. And, and I'm lucky because, you know, uh, my, my thing is teaching. I, I love teaching it. I like guys that are willing to work at it and be uncomfortable learning. Challenge to players, and when from the first minute they step into a, our practices, 
uh, to the parents, to the players, our biggest challenge is to get them to feel comfortable being uncomfortable because that's progress. That means they're learning something new. They're training their bodies to do something just a little bit differently. And, you know, I, if, it, if it makes them better and works, it, it gets them to work at their craft to get better, that makes them a better player. That improves their skills. That makes them a college prospect. You're not a college prospect just because you go to a showcase. You're a college prospect because you've developed your personal and your individual physical talents into a better player to, that can project or play at the college level. And, you know, full count uh, baseball or winter high school program or our fall development, college development program, that's our main objective and our main goals. My name is Tom Zangle and I'm a first baseman from North Huntington High School and I'm a junior. Uh, our team, we won the section, we won our section title and we ended up losing in the state finals to Huntington Central who is probably our biggest rival and we ended up playing him in the state finals but I, uh, I made first team all state, first team all county and first team all group and everything as a sophomore. Right now, probably my favorite player is Josh Hamilton, just because um, of all he's been through and just watching him at the home run derby is really a great thing to watch. And I really respect what he's been able to do and accomplish after all he's gone through. Well, one of my friends made it last year kind of as a joke, but it's called Tom Zangle is God. Uh, I've only been on it like three times. And just pretty much a lot of kids go on there and bash me. Uh, yes, I do own Guitar Hero. Are you good at Guitar Hero? No, I'm pretty bad actually. Really bad. No, I can't really dance. You can't dance at all? No, I can't dance. You have like one club move? That... Not really, I don't have a signature move, no. <laughs> I've been wanting to go there since I was about 10, and you know, I, didn't, I never thought that I was going to ever get the chance. Well, Coach Fox asked me if I wanted to play there, and it was pretty much quick decision on a quick decision and I hope going there I'm going to play and do well but I, I really want to play in the College World Series at least once and I think I have a good shot at playing in the College World Series with their recent success and I think Coach Fox is going to be a great coach and he's really going to make me better a better player. Kenny Chesney in Lincoln Park. Verse? Oh man. Uh, I don't even know. I don't know if I could sing. I don't know if I could sing on camera. Uh. Do your training as a hitter. Okay, it's important that the first uh, your mindset starts in a progressive type manner, where you start with T, then go to a soft toss, and then go to live BP. There's nothing more ineffective than a kid going in and dropping dollars into a batting cage and then just taking the same fastball, the same spot, and just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. Mm. That's not helping his mechanics, because whether you're five years old or 21 years old as a college player, you're always going to want to just make sure that ball doesn't get by. No what you do when you begin training or your practice procedures, you want to start with T work, progress from T work, where you get to the point and you feel comfortable with your mechanics, that you're to balance, that you know that when you hit a ball, you're not falling, um, you're not worried about your hands getting, you can do a lot of things with the tee because you don't have to worry about the ball moving. That's why it's so effective. Time we set up when we're gonna work from the tee, we always wanna set the ball up in front of the middle of the plate, okay? You're gonna set the ball up in front of the middle plate and all we're trying to do is every time we hit the ball, hit the ball right up the middle, okay? Using good sound mechanics. 
And every time you take that swing, you want to take that swing and start to, like, like, we, like I talked to you about the other time, almost like you're in math class, checking your work. After you swing, don't be so quick to come back. Take your swing and try and get a feel for, okay, I hit that ball real well. How did I get there? Do I have my feet underneath me? Did my hands feel like they were strong when they got to the ball? The next thing that we do when we progress from the tee, again, we go from the tee to a thing we call soft toss. Soft toss is relatively, now you're going to take a minimized movement situation where the ball's not moving a lot, okay, but it's moving enough that you can get used to throwing your hands to the ball, getting your hands in a rhythm when you load up, getting your lower half in a rhythm when you engage to the ball. Anytime that you start with your soft toss, you're just starting very easy around the middle of the plate, middle to middle away, and you're gonna start with easy flips, okay? And you're not putting the hardest swing possible into this. Mm. You don't need to. All you're trying to do is gradually get yourself used to timing. The T, you stress your mechanics. The soft toss, you're stressing mechanics in a controlled environment, but then you're also implementing some timing mechanism into it as well. Yeah. Okay? First thing you want to do is make sure you're getting good feeds from your partner. When I say load, I'm going to drop my hands. That's when you load your hands up, get your foot touched down if you're a guy who strides. And then just once the ball gets in the zone, go where it's thrown. Load. A front toss is a very good drill to do prior to live BP because as the feeder, as the guy who's feeding you, I can feed you in, middle, and away very easily. And I can really control the environment. Again, the ball is a little bit more advanced timing mechanism in it. But it's not coming so fast that you are going to just sort of lose all your training on mechanics and timing and just start jumping at the ball. Feeding two. We're going to go in. And I'm going to come back as my loading mechanism. When I come back like this, that's when you're going to load. And this, the feeder is just as important as the hitter. Load. Controlled environment. I can set the tone. If I want to work on a changeup or something that would be like an off-speed pitch, I just slow it down and force the hitter to wait till the ball drops or comes down. If I'm working the outside half, I can work the outside half by putting it on the outside with a lot of control. Again, controlling the environment, but a ball is moving towards you. Load. And you're watching the hitter making sure that he's doing where the pitch is pitched, he's hitting it, okay? So from mechanics, mechanics and a little bit of timing, controlled environment timing with the front toss, to now finish up your training session with some overhand throw, okay? Live BP, live BP should be thrown to a specific area. Hopefully you got a guy who's throwing well enough and you, you're not trying to off, you're not trying to throw off the hitter's timing. You're trying to give him good pitches that he can handle. If you're working curveballs, make the feeder throw curveballs. Something that just has a little spin, comes out a little bit slower. Curveball. An important thing when taking BP. BP should repeat what you're going to swing at in a game. If the guy's not good throwing BP, you shouldn't be swinging at the pitches that are not good. Because all that's going to do is condition you to have bad habits in a game. Because this is specifically training your timing and what you see. This is the best opportunity for you as a hitter to work on pitch recognition. Do I see the ball inside? I'm trying to see it as early as I can so I can swing as early as I can. If I'm seeing the ball outside, I'm trying to see it as early as I can so I can tell myself to wait. Mm -hmm. Fastballs.
One of the scales that each team uses is a 20 to 80 scale. Uh, for example, 20 would be the lowest grade and 80 would be the best grade you could have. And that is on a major league scale. So when we go out and watch the players and we grade out the five different tools, we're usually using a 20 to 80 scale. So 50 would be average. So if we went out there and watched a high school outfielder throw from the outfield, we're comparing him to a big league player and we're grading him on a big league scale. And therefore 50 would be average, 80 would be this the best you could be and then 20 would be the lowest. The, the thing that I enjoy most about coaching and training is working with the, the young ball players. Um, I, I think it's a, I'd like to think it's a win-win. I enjoy it very much, and I, I believe that the, the boys do as well. Okay, the first drill that we're gonna take a look at, uh, we're gonna use deflated soccer balls. We have a plunger acting as our T, and what this drill is gonna teach our young hitters to do is stay through the ball, finish through the ball with their swing, and at the same time, it's gonna build up a little bit of hand strength as we go forward. So all we're gonna do is ask our hitter to treat it as if it's a regular baseball on a tee, and just put a good swing on it. Follow through, finish your swing. We're gonna drive through the ball. It's, it's something that I can't wait to get out to the ball field, uh, particularly with this group of, of young players with the Gators. Um, it's an outstanding group of kids. The parents are fantastic. Uh, every bad thing that people have ever talked about Little League Baseball, we've never experienced with the Gators. The, the, the players can't wait to get out there. Uh, I can't wait to see the parents. They have their own um, uh, way of supporting the children. Uh, they have uh, some of the parents have their same seats every game down the right field line or behind a dugout. and. Everything is just total encouragement, and, and that makes it, honestly, a lot, a lot of fun for me. And uh, I, I believe <clears throat> most of the, the experiences that we've had are experiences that we're sorry that they end each season. And what we're going to ask Brian to do is get in your normal stance, and let's take one, two steps back. Okay, kind of like a field goal kicker when he's lining up to kick the ball. So get in your spot where you would normally land with your lead foot, come back two spots, and then we're going to take those same two steps to the ball. Okay, so we're going to go step, step, hit. Okay, ready? Step, step, hit. The equipment that we, we train, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a baseball junkie. <clears throat> I think one of the most important things uh, as a baseball coach, um, and I, I also coach uh, college ball at Raritan Valley, um, I'm always looking to talk to other coaches and, and pick up training uh, opportunities and, and find these different 
um, types of training equipment. Um, all the stuff that, that I use in my training is very effective and a lot of it's fun. The, the, the players enjoy doing some of the drills. It's, it's not your standard, let's go out and just take batting practice. We, we try to do drills that are fun, uh, but the bottom line is we want to work on the skill. Is when we hit, we always want to be palm up, palm down, okay, as we're going through the hitting zone. So we want to get those knuckles lined up. Right now I'm palm up, palm down. The longer we can stay palm up, palm down through the hitting zone, the better shot we have at hitting the ball, okay? What this drill is going to do, you're going to treat it like a regular baseball bat, except we're going to put a ball on there. When we take our swing, if we stay palm up, palm down, we're going to catch the ball in the net. Okay? All right, make sure we're palm up, palm down, okay? All right, let's take a swing and give it a shot. Good job. I'll search around. I'll, I'll go on different websites um, and try to find, you know, these, uh, these different tools. And a couple of them we actually made up ourselves. So it's... Uh, it kind of makes it fun, and, and a lot has to do with sharing, you know, with other coaches. We'll go to a, we'll go to dinner with a couple coaches, and next thing you know, each one of us will come up with two or three new drills from each other, and and that's the beauty of it. That's what that's what I enjoy most about it. The tools that we use, um, sometimes we take a standard drill, and we, I try to just kind of expand on it and try to again make it effective for the the training of the young hitters, while at the same time making it fun. What we're going to ask Brian to do is we're going to put the ball over his head. He's going to load in stride or, or get in his launch position. At that time, we're going to drop the ball, and we're going to try to work on our back quickness as well as our hand-eye coordination. This is a very difficult drill. We're going to give it a shot. Okay, so Brian, you get set. Once you load in stride, I'm going to release the ball. Cody Pace, and starting shortstop for Spotswood High School. Freshman year, going to the state championship and winning it all. And it's something that I'd like to do again. Well, as a team, I want to go back to the state championship like we did in uh, my freshman year in 2007. And uh, I'd like to go back to the counties again and uh, see where that takes us. In the fall, like we just did, we had the uh, full count baseball. and. That was a good thing because it got me to see live pitching and well, comp uh, like good competition. I mean, I was facing kids that are college prospects, and that helped me a lot because it'll help for the for the school season because not a lot of kids are as good as the pitchers that I faced. So I should be able to do well against them. During the summer, I have a beach house, so I like to go there from the start of start of June all the way through September do a little surfing, uh, a little video games, stuff like that. I like to hang out with my friends. Just go out and have fun. Seeing different pitches as they're coming in because that's going to help me a lot for the future to, to see whether a curveball is coming to take it the opposite way or whether a fastball is coming to drive it up the middle or to, to hit it in a gap. That's probably the things that I need to work on the most. and. Uh, just arm strength in the field in general to make the long throws if I need to backhand to throw the guy out at first. Those are just some of the things that I need to work on. Hopefully playing college baseball. I mean, that's my dream since Little League to play varsity on high school baseball and then make my way up to college and hopefully play Division I college and see where that takes me from there. The campus location, that would, uh, That'd be one of the tops, and then 
see where it would get me job-wise after college and if it's a good baseball school that would help because obviously I want to go there to play baseball. No girlfriends. I'll just stay single. Playing in my iPod. Uh, little Wayne. Little Wayne? Yeah. Sing a little bit of Little Wayne. Sing a little bit of Little Wayne. I can't sing Little Wayne. <laughs> That's that's for let's keep this G rated. <laughs>